Hello, everybody. Welcome to VC Jedi Archives. I'm Mike. And, and I am Bryce. And today we're going to review issue number 12. Wow. Check out this cover. With our lovely and menacing Lorna D, quickly becoming one of my favorite villains. She's a really cool character. Yeah. I do, yeah. I do like her a lot. And I like her backstory, too, from that book, um, where we learned where she was actually a princess. You know, that was... Oh, Tempest Runner. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a uh, League of Comic Geeks to review. Help us with our review of comic book issue number 12 of The High Republic. Here's the main cover. And what I like about this cover is she's holding this lightsaber. So she's not a Jedi, you know, uh, but she's got this lightsaber that she collected, as we know from issue number 11. Yep. Uh, that she collected, just like Grievous was collecting lightsabers. So this might become her hobby of killing Jedi and taking their lightsabers. And look at this amulet on her chest. It looks yeah, like uh, it kind of looks like right? a yeah, it kind of looks like a like if you think from like Egyptian, kind of like a, a scarab. A scarab, mm -hmm. right? Like it's probably influenced by a scarab. Yeah, it looks really cool. I like this artwork. It's very clean. She's yeah. very sleek. Look at her, she's very muscular. I really like it. She's got these grenades, her mask, very menacing. We have a few alternate covers. Let's look at this variant. This is really cool. So at yeah. the end of the last episode, we see that Avar was going to pull down the ship with the force. Um, yeah, it's a really, really cool. Um, I feel like very, it's like a He Man She Ra kind of, you know, yes. I, have the, I have the power kind of like I'm front and center. Um, you know, that's this is what kind of remind me of that, you know, She Ra and He Man kind of. Um, focus when they when they go from being uh you know prince adam or whatever to you know he-man kind of things mm -hmm. what this kind of reminds me of it's a really I, I very fun very very cool cover i really like it a lot it also is reminiscent for me of the original star wars poster where we have luke you know lay out on his leg and luke is standing in the, in the center and you've got yeah. like that that cross beam of light behind them he's raising yep. the lightsaber up he's got the same pose with his hand out and I think the lightsaber's up, though, right? Yes. Very dynamic. I like this cover a lot. And the colors are interesting because they're not bold colors. They're more like pastels. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. yep. Next alternate cover, we have this variant. This is really cool. So we see Avar confronting uh, Lorna. So this mm -hmm. might be a spoiler alert cover. And we see the wreckage of a ship. Yeah like this Lorna definitely holds her own so i'm yes. just curious i wonder why Lorna isn't using the lightsaber because she yeah, knows so, she has the, it yeah some of the variants um are a little bit different if you also notice that the lightsaber that avar's holding looks like the lightsaber on the regular cover that Lorna's holding right this doesn't have the cross guard like Avar. Oh, stuff. right, right. So different artists. So, yeah, it's so different artists have usually like different adaptations and stuff. So the variants are always really cool to see because sometimes they have nothing to do with the, the book at all. Like we saw the Orla covers from the previous. That's the previous right. They don't, she wasn't they don't, in the issue at all. Yeah, wasn't in the that's issue right. at all. So some of these variants are just, you know, that's what they are. They're just a variant cover that has really nothing, maybe nothing to do with story or or foreshadowing, uh, you know, the future issues. So, yeah. Because Orna really... was definitely a foreshadowing. Also has Lorna on the cover. And she's like on a desert planet. Yeah. I I love this cover. This is really cool. Yeah. It almost looks like she's on like, you know, oh, Tatooine. Tatooine. Mm -hmm. You know, everything in Star Wars revolves around Tatooine. Yeah. But you know, I like this one because look at her skin. You can see the, the yeah. color gradations of her skin. Yep. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Definitely a really cool contrast with the, with the you know, the two-tone with the green skin and everything like that. And then like the purple armor and all that good stuff. Love it. Looks really good. And then the last one is a virgin variant of that cover. So we can really look at the artwork closely. We have these rock formations, which of course remind me of, of uh, Phantom Menace when they're pod racing through the desert. Yeah. 
All right, so Star Wars High Republic number 12, Jedi's End, Chapter 2, The Spirit of Disunity. The hunt for Lorna D continues. The Nile have unleashed the nameless terror against the Jedi, which we know as the Leveler. Uh, Marshal Avar Chris is more determined than ever to bring Lorna D to justice, but does Stellan Geos and the Jedi Council agree? As Keith Trenna struggles with what she experienced on the Nile base, the Jedi prepare for war. Plus, the truth about Skier is finally revealed, but what does it mean for his future? So, Jumping back uh, two issues ago, the doctor revealed to Skier that he has some, some bad news about his health. He did a scan, yep. uh, telling him why he's losing his connection to the Force. Uh, we didn't hear about that in issue 11, but I think we might find out in issue 12. For sure. Spoiler alert. <laughs> the Nile have unleashed a terrible weapon on the Jedi, a horror only glimpse on Grizzall in the aftermath of disaster at the Republic Fair, which of course affected poor Loden Greatstorm. Jedi Knights are being reduced to crumbling husks. First Lord and Great Storm, and now the Bond twins, Turek and Surrett, are Starlight Be Beacon. Avar Chris believes that Lorna D, mistakenly thought to be the Eye of the Nile, is behind the attacks and will stop at nothing to bring her to justice. However, cracks are starting to show between the Jedi. Avar increasingly at odds with her old friend and council member Stella Geos. And all the time, Jedi Knight Keith Trennis, the sole survivor of the Nile's unknown terror, wonders if she could have done more to save her friends. And I think that's what's going to gnaw away at her and why she just ends up leaving the Jedi Order. My prediction. I don't know if that happens, but... Yeah, we, yeah, we don't know, really. Yeah, so, poor Avar. She just looks defeated. Yes. You know? Yeah, defeated, trying not to, to be angry, but um, kind of hard not to be. Yeah, tired. Just, it's just too much. Feel yep. bad for her. It was supposed to be a cushy assignment, right? Being on the marshal of the Yep. It's supposed to be like, oh, she's gonna be out here helping people get connected to the to the core world and it's anything but. And we see a familiar ship there next to the Starlight Beacon, Mike. The Halcyon. That's right. I absolutely love how they've incorporated this ship. I'm not even kidding. This is so cool. <laughs> and I'm reading, are you reading the Halcyon? <laughs> Uh, they're actually sitting next to me, right, right here I mean, in the. I love them. I love them. So I just got the latest issue. Yeah, so. I gotta gotta run to the comic book store today. Actually, so I gotta pick that up, and hopefully, my I, Obi, Obi Wan number two will be there as well. So uh, uh, I know we're on a side note here, but I definitely do want to stay on the Halcyon. But I think I'm gonna wait until I've read all the comics and all the stories, so that when I do stay at the Halcyon, I have a better connection to it. Well, you let me know when you're going, and then I'll have you pay for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> uh, so here's a Starlight Beacon. That's the Halcyon, which has been flying back and forth. This looks like when they were towing the... It, it is. Yep. Towing so they to all the... towed the station Yep. to the other planet to rescue the inhabitants, right? Yep, correct. Okay. So that's, And that's happening in the books. Yeah, so this, this so we're we're really leaning into um, the fallen star, right? Right. Yeah, we're we're getting there. And the Halcyon was, of course, the largest of the ships to help with this jump. Yeah, where they, you know, they're all they're all towing the Starlight Beacon. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So I get my. Oh, maybe it's not. I thought that was uh, no. I thought that that Halcyon cover was similar to this panel, but um, it's not. So here we are, and uh, they, of course, the Halcyon would be able to uh, travel on its own, but the I think the hyperdrive just isn't online yet, so they're towing it with all these yep. other ships. Um, and that was, of course, Bell's editor figured that out, right? Yes, that was his fix. Yeah. Clever Jedi. So, um, but this is a nice little retrospect going back and looking at what's going on. And I think this is Stellan. This is Stellan noticing that Avar is just, you know, she's not in a good way. Uh, the green is always Keeve. Oh, is it Keeve? I thought it was yep. Stellan. Yep, the green dialogue is Keeve. Oh. Yep, that's always been Keeve. It's Keeve's thought process. 
it's been the one nice consistent every 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 um issue that she's 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 in the great dialogue is our, our key it's keeps conscience it's her inner dialogue oh cool i'm gonna reread yeah. the books now I mean, the yeah. comics because then now that gives me i'm seeing it totally differently now yeah no that's all it's keeps conscious um so that's what the beautiful part about this this whole thing is it's really centered in around her like there's so much going on with a lot of characters but a lot of this is around keeves keeves journey her perspective her journey nice okay Mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to go back and read so this goes back to uh what we last saw in the last episode where avon was using the force to pull one of these shit down Yes. And then Lon is like, give it more power. And then, oops. And then, uh, so Amar is using all she can with the force to pull the ship down, but yeah. nobody's helping her. So Skier's not helping her because he's more concerned about um, Keeve. Yeah. And then look at Avar's face. She's like almost going to the dark side. Yeah, very, very uh focused Mm -hmm. but then she has this like red bubble around her no which is kind of like that's like kind of dark side no right i i think it's yeah i think you're right i think it's it's anger right there Mm -hmm. like it's an angry no that's why we see the red around it the black bubbles are dark side right I, you know, I don't know. I've never really like honestly paid attention to that, Mike. That's probably something, you know, I just feel like that was a very adamant no, and I'm angry that she's gone. And the reason why I say that is because the that panel right to the left, you know, it's outlined in red. You look at her face, you know, she's definitely, like, angry. Yes. Not good for Jedi. Not right. good. And so then Avar, she was not able to pull the ship down, um, which is surprising because she's she's quite powerful. Yes. So, but what makes her, you know, the most powerful is when she can get the songs of the Jedi around her to work together. Right. So she's good at uniting, but not on her own. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She's more powerful together. Yeah. So she's like the Jedi equivalent of. uh, Lena says we are all the Republic. She's like, we are all the Jedi. You know, yeah. Right yeah. She's yes. So she she sees, you know, like her. I don't think we have ever seen a Jedi that that sees the force as a song and how mm-hmm. each person plays their own notes, basically. But yet if we can come together, you know, it's really cool. And speaking of which, I'm reading uh, Shadow of the Sith. So I don't know if you're reading that book. It's it's, really it's being good. delivered today. Oh, so good because in it, oh, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but Anakin reveals how he sees the Force. Oh, that's cool. Which is cool because he's explaining it to Luke. So I'm like, wow. So it's nice. Uh, it's nice how it's all getting so interconnected. So it's like a tighter Star Wars universe. I really love yeah. it. Yeah, I was super excited for that book to kind of talk to go further about you know him and uh lando and luke's um, yeah. story with og bastoon and all that so really good i love yeah. it i love it um, so here they're back on it looks like they're back on starlight beacon yes they and uh, of course Surrett and Turek are i think in medical bay right mm-hmm. they're in that induced coma or that um they put themselves into that um Hibernation trance. Hibernation trance, right. right. Yep. Which Luke did a lot in the EU, remember, when he would travel? He would go into hibernation trance to not use any resources. Do you remember that mm. in the EU? So it's pretty cool to bring that back in. And here's Maru. Yeah, basically what we're seeing here is Avar has decided to take the path drive that the Nile use on their ships um, and attach it to her ship uh, to then now hunt down Lorna D, which, you know, she seems like she's uh, a little bit more of a, a mercenary Jedi at this point. Uh, uh-huh. With Oh, no, Avar? Uh, Avar, yeah. yeah. She seems like she's a little bit more, I mean, she's very focused. There's no doubt about that. But it seems like she's almost going on like a mercenary type mission at this point. 
it's definitely changing the, her her character. Yeah. Because this is very unlike what I would have expected from Avar in the yeah. beginning of the series. Yeah. So she's she's being you know the whole all the Jedi are being poisoned by the Nile. You know, in one way or another, yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. So not not good for the Jedi. And then here Stellan is telling her, no, you know what, we we need to just step back. You know, and they're like at odds. And they were best friends. Yes. So now they're not seeing eye to eye and they're like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. And this this kind of uh, you know, this whole rift between the two of them that's starting um plays out later in you know the book as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she just like turns her back on him and he's like marshall chris and everyone's like what's going on because they were even closer than friends right because they were weren't they closer than that when they were padawans yes yep so... and keith is feeling it's very guilty yeah, feeling that she could have done more besides mm -hmm. just hide. But she really couldn't have. You know, there's no way she could know, but there's nothing she could have done. Right. Not against the leveler. Yeah. So there we have Surrett and Turek. Oh, this is awful. You're looking yeah, more can... calcified now. Yes. Yep, exactly. They're a little bit more calcified at this point. Mm -hmm. But not turning to dust, so there's still hope. Mm-hmm. So I think that when they went into that hibernation trance, they just paused it so that the ill effects wouldn't continue. But they're not necessarily healing themselves. Right. And then Keith is feeling very guilty speaking to them. And then she's remembering what she saw. Yep. When she was under the effects. That was really demonic, really ugly. Oh, poor Keith. Yeah, a lot of crying. <laughs> yeah. Here, so. These are some very poignant panels. So then Maru walks in and he's checking in on her. And he's concerned, you know, he's worried about Avar because you know, she's not being her normal self. Yeah. It's, serious. that's the, I believe the crash vector in the background there. Mm -hmm. And you can see Keeve in the background, weakened by the leveler. Yeah. So Lorna V took the leveler with her, right? Yes. She has it? She has it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, and Avar, well, once that Avar wasn't able to bring Lorna's ship back down, she's still angry. Now she's taking that on Skier because he, mm. of course, didn't follow what she had told him to do. Right. And she's mad at him. And she's, oh, she's laying it thick. You know, you're not worthy of a Jedi or Skier. He already feels bad about himself, and she's just, like, not helping. Yeah. And she basically just... Yeah. Next panel. You're done. Yeah, give me your lightsaber, which is, like, terrible. And poor Keeve is like, no, you can't do that to my master. You know, he just, he just saved her life. He just rescued her. Right, them. yeah. And Avar's like, mm-mm. But I think the skier's been feeling like uh, something's not right. He just doesn't know. Right. So he hands over his lightsaber. Well, you can see after, you know, this whole thing is over with and how bad Keeve is in, in shape. Um, <clears throat> you know, Avar's like, what did I do? Yeah. You know, it always feels bad. Like I did something out of anger and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, definitely displaced aggression. And then Keeve's like, oh, you're right, that green bubble is Keeve, because she says, mm -hmm. I need him. But she tells Avar, we need him, but then she says, I need him. Yeah, exactly, yep. I, I, I love this. This is probably um, right here, like, he's still trying to connect to the Force. Because he you know, he's a good guy. Yep. Yeah. And... I, what I can't tell here, I, I'm assuming the candles are are 
are leveling not by the force but by like a little propulsion that's why the blue's coming yeah, out but at that. first when you look at this it's like oh he's leveling those candles by using the force but he's really not i don't he's think not. so yeah because he's losing his connection to the force yeah we are about to find out why yep so he hears a knock at the door you know beep he's like not now but of course it's it's key yeah. she's like then when you know she just shh, walked right yeah. in barging in on him i like this exchange between the two of them yeah i know this is great <laughs> great dialogue um, yeah did you just use the force to override my door yes are you proud of me no liar <laughs> right <laughs> funny <laughs> i would love to see them like in a live action or in a animation something I, i'd love these two characters i i would be super happy with um either mm -hmm. you know i think i think some of the best storytelling is an animated too you know obviously outside of the written word but yeah um yeah i think there's great great animated um potential with the high republic so who knows i hope so i hope so so then she's trying to get back to her master connect with him and he's like no get out of here i failed you and she's not giving up on him and then he's going to share with her what he found from the doctor, yep. which we hadn't heard about. So yeah. now finally we find out that he's got McGrack syndrome. Which is a very, very rare uh, transdotion disease. Uh, illness or disease that it's had. So here we learn it has nothing to do with the drain deer at all. Um, right. He was much stronger than that. But what was happening was he was just deteriorating based on his species and the, the mm -hmm. rare chance that they can, you know, get this disease. So, Yeah. So he's deteriorating. He's giving into aggression and rage. Um, and this reminded me of like, uh, you know, that zombie movie, the, the 21 days or have you ever seen that one where they call it the rage that they get exposed to that virus. And uh, was it 20, 28 days or 28 days. Yeah. yeah. So I think what, the British zombie movie. Yeah, I think it's 28 Days. Isn't 28 that the one days. with uh, Killian Murphy? I, I don't know actor names, but... I think it was Killian Murphy. I just know the zombies are running through fire. They're running and they're on fire and they keep running. So Yeah, I think so it's 28 Days. 28 Days, yeah. Yeah. So, But it was the rage. So he's he's turning into like the zombie and he's, he's concerned. And that's also why he must have handed over his lightsaber. Because he didn't want to have that lightsaber if he completely right. went into this dementia, yep. or whatever it's happening. So that's, of course, sad to hear. But Key was not going to give up on her master. She loves him. And she's like, you know, we can do this. You know, don't give up. Yep. She thought we can do this. She's very we, you know, connected to him. That's her master. And then she doesn't want to give up on him. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of great dialogue. Yeah, good character building there. Then we get this double panel. Yep. I like it because we see the I yeah, like to see ships. See the, you can see the jump drive there, the Pathfinder drive. There it's at the back of the ship there, at back or front. I'm not sure which way we're looking here, but the green, do you believe that green dot is the, the path drive? This one here? I believe that's the path drive that they installed on, oh, the, cool. on the ship. On the on the Ataraxia, right? That's the ataraxia. Yep, yep. Cool. So here's Keeve. You know, it's interesting because I wonder what's going on in her mind because we have the thought bubbles for Keeve, but we don't have the thought bubbles for Ava or any of the others. Right, yeah. That would be really cool to find out what's there in your dialogue. What are they going through? Yeah, it's kind of a theme in, in the, with, within the two, the two comic book lines, right? Like Keeve's... Keeves, we've always had the Keeve um, green bubble, bubbles or, or boxes where her subconscious and then in High Republic, it was always like uh, Cricks and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had Cricks and we had Lula to the Oso. Lula. Mm -hmm. Tell and us then, all up. Yeah, and then uh, oh man, I can't remember her name, Mike. The, the girl. Lula's remember girlfriend? Yeah, I remember because we at the end, they started melding together. They yes. were thinking, Pink, pink and purple. It's Lula and, it, and um, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't remember her name either. Yeah, it's, yes, uh, yeah. it's Lula's girlfriend. Yeah, so it's kind of cool how these main characters through the books, like they, 
you know, they have their own conscious. So we're in their mind as well as seeing everything playing out, but we're also feeling what they're feeling along the way. So now she has a path drive fully integrated. So she wants to go. And uh, he's like, yep, it's all done, Marshall. It's like, let's go find her. Yep, she's, she's on a mission. Mm -hmm. And Keeve's going to go with her too because she's she feels super guilty about Turek and Surrett and Skeev. Not just Keeve. <gasps> oh, snap. It's Skeer. So he's like, you know what? I know you took away my lightsaber, but you're not the council. Give me back right. my lightsaber. <laughs> so good for him. Good for him. And I think Ava, this was good for her too, because I think she does regret taking his lightsaber. Yeah. Look at her face. I love this panel. Her eyes. And they are. Keeve's eyes. Getting ready to set out against mm. the will of the council. Right. We know Skier's not going to care about because Skier at this point he's, knows yeah. his fate's going to be handled by the council, so he's going to do whatever he he wants until that day comes. Skier's wow. kind of like uh, he's kind of like uh, um, ooh Obi Wan's master, uh, Qui Gon. Qui Gon, right? Yeah, Probably I can see. I can see. Do. Yeah, where where you could get to draw the some comparisons to Qui Gon, but I just think he knows his days are numbered. That he's just going to do yeah from his as disease. much good and in his in his mind as much good as he can until uh, that day comes. While he still can, right, yep. right. So there they go. Yep. Ataraxia taking off with Avar, Skier, and Keith. And who's this guy? What is his name? The pilot. Um, he's a Jedi too, right? Yeah, I think that's uh, oh man, uh, Nuran, Nuran. Oh, oh, it's Maru. No, that's not Maru. It says thank you, Maru. Oh no, Maru was speaking to her over the yeah. intercom. Okay. Yeah, it's not Maru. I thought it was. Um, it's a little guy. I thought it was Nuran. Let me see, let me see. Oh no no no! It just says there it's Jedi. Uh, oh, there it, <laughs> oh, it even says it's Jedi uh, Manji. Oh Manji, okay. So they're taking off to go find Lorna uh, D. And we are gone. And that's the end of this one. So next issue, we see Avar deflecting blaster bolts. Yep. So I'm assuming they find Lorna. Yep. We only have three issues left of this run after this one to see the exciting uh, conclusion of Phase 1 Marvel High Republic. Comic issues, yes. So thanks for joining us, and uh, I'm looking forward to the conclusion of this. I really like all the ships they're showing us now and the, the deep dives into the character's psyche. Um, any last comments, Bryce? Yeah, uh, you know, like, like always, hit us up on YouTube, uh, the Virtual Cantina Network. Got a lot of great things happening over there. Uh, hit us up on Facebook. Uh, we are Star Wars Celebration Europe 2023. We are closing in on 44,000 members. Uh, awesome. Uh, we are definitely the largest uh, fan base Facebook group on the planet. Uh, in, the in the galaxy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hit us up uh, with our partner pages. Uh, you know, a couple other real positive uh, pages, uh, Star Wars Book Nerds and Star Wars Comic Book Club. And mm -hmm. may the force be with you. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, we'll see you next time. May the force be with you.